My next guest is still a believer in the bull case, says the latest market setbacks should be temporary. Joining me now is HSBC Global Research's chief multi-asset strategist, Max Kettner. Max, welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. So the bull market's intact? Yeah, I think so. I mean, what, we, what we're seeing now is obviously a lot related to rates as it related to inflation. But I do think it's a little bit exactly the opposite from what we've done about four months ago. Remember, four months ago, the narrative was, oh, you know, the Fed is way too late. They've been late in hiking. And now they're late in cutting because, you know, something like the three month or the six month annualized core inflation is already at or below 2%. And now just four months later, that narrative has shifted to the entire opposite extreme. So I think as much as four months ago was entirely really exaggerated on the cutting and on the dovish side, that is now exaggerated on the hawkish side. It's not like we're on the brink of a new inflation wave. Yeah, inflation is stickier, but we know that. But it's also stickier because earnings growth, because nominal growth is just much stronger and that is what ultimately, I think, should be driving equities and risk assets in general here. Sure. But if, if four months ago, part of the rally was based on the idea of multiple rate cuts, how can we be in the same position today if the number of rate cuts has gone so dramatically down and at best pushed out? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, part of that narrative that it was related to the number of cuts or the number or the, the extent of easing, I think was a little exaggerated. Yeah, that there has been, you know, somewhat of a, a correlation in the second half of the year or between the S&P 500, for example, and the number of cuts until uh, December 2024. But let's be honest, that correlation really only existed from around August last year up until December last year. So really only around four or five months. It's not been something that's been around for really ages or anything like a persistent uh, correlation. I do think for equities overall, unless the narrative from the Fed really decisively shifts from cuts to hikes, Unless that happens, it should be bullish for equities. Because remember so, last year, a yeah. lot of the narrative was based, why should I buy equities? Why should I buy credit if I get 5.5% in cash? So I do suspect there's quite a lot of cash still on the sidelines that can be put to work. Um, some people are being reminded of why they have that cash on the sidelines in the first place, aren't they? As rates have backed up again, the money that was expected to spur the next leg of the bull market may never come into the market because it feels better sitting in cash and still getting 5%. Oh, yeah, it absolutely does. I think it always does before the fact, right? Like we have the same thing last year, uh, let's say around April, May last year, where, you know, we were also very bullish on things like emerging market debt and high yield and equities. And we had to push back against that narrative around five and a half percent cash yields versus, you know, an earnings yield that's not looking too attractive and versus uh, corporate bond yields that don't look too attractive. Absolutely. At the face of it, it looks very unattractive. But let's face it, when we look, for example, at things like sentiment and positioning, we just had three weeks ago at least a mild sell signal on our shorter term signals. That has all but evaporated. That's all but gone now. So uh, from, from a sort of technical perspective, at least we can see a bit of a short term bounce. When we look at the earnings picture, it's the same thing. Look at, for example, S&P 500 earnings expectations. It's expected to drop almost $3 on an index level now in Q1, particularly driven by the cyclical sectors, by things like consumer discretionary, industrials, by things like energy. So it's really also that cyclical pessimism that is still, I think, in those expectations. And all of that, really, that, that kind of uh, uh, pessimism that is still in the near-term expectations. I think once we see those earnings beats, perhaps already starting this week on the tech side, that really can spur the next leg higher despite, at the face of it, still these attractive cash yields on the sidelines. So you, you think earnings are going to be good enough to justify current market multiples? Yes, I do think so. It, it would be different, and I think it is going to be different from Q3 onwards when expectations are much, much higher. Remember, what we are faced with right now is around $53 on S&P earnings in terms of the uh, index levels. That is expected to increase to 63 and $65 
in Q3 and Q4, so just in six, nine months time, I think that kind of optimism is a little bit too much. That's something that we don't have to deal with now. I think, you know, as long as uh, earnings will be beating that very low bar, as long as guidance does come in a little bit better than expected, or at least in line, that's going to be good. That will be showing, hey, you know what, the growth side, the nominal growth side of things is still fine, and that's ultimately what matters. But in Q3 and Q4, when the bar to beat is going to be much higher, I think that's where then risk assets and particularly use equities will start to struggle. But we'll deal with, with that when we get there. That's not before September, October.